whether or not we all like the procedures or not, whether we like the policy or not, sometimes we cannot change things. We have to adapt what we do, at least on paper, to suit the requirements. And this is a lesson I have learned in Australia. We have several sources of funds. Some of them are government funds. And I look at those and I say, oh, I don't like this. It doesn't make sense to me. But, and I critique them publicly and privately and so on, but I have to adhere with the regulations. So what I do, I do what I want to do and then try to word it in something that satisfies them. Uh, some of the policies that uh, Sir Nick talked about, I said, ooh, uh, that is not my image of what action research is and so on. But it doesn't matter. What we can do is rather than be guided completely by the policy, think what is worthwhile to do ourselves and then word it in such a way that satisfies the policy. What I have heard is that when you write a proposal, if it doesn't mean the guidelines, they come back to you and say, look, I suggest you do that. So you have a chance to modify a little bit. The part that I did not like very much, and between friends, I can be honest, then my views are not important, is that question of qualitative and quantitative. They seem to say quantitative, qualitative research is not good by itself. You need quantitative. Well, okay. if I'm writing a, a, um, a proposal for qualitative research, I might add a questionnaire, a test at the end or something like that to satisfy them, but I will focus on what I think is important. So we need part of empowering us as teachers and as academics is to know how to play the system. Okay? Uh, now you can try to justify what you're doing as much as you can by the literature and theory. And if they insist on changes to suit their policy, well, you can see how you can do that. So what I'm saying is policies and requirements are important, but we can uh, play the game a little bit to do what we think is important and satisfy their demands at the same time. Uh, and there are no simple rules how to do that. Does that make sense? Uh, okay. So what I want to do now is break into rooms. And I want us to start thinking, what are the big, real, everyday life problems in Mindanao that affect your work as a teacher and also that concern you the most? What issues in society at a social level, educational level, and classroom level. What are the big issues that concerns you? And then also in the small room, try to identify some problems that you would like to start working on in action research mode. It could be informed by those problems. It could be something else. Okay, so that when we come back and share our learning, we can hear what others are saying and say, ooh, that is an interesting issue. I'd like to work with that group. Now, I'm not assuming that schools cannot work across boundaries. So if there's a group of teachers in school A, are interested in an issue that also concerns T 
teachers from school B, there is no, nothing to prevent them from working with each other. Okay. So let us try to identify, we're not committing ourselves to working in these uh, uh, fields. Let us try to think what are important things in schools in Mindanao, in your region, that might be worth to investigate and improve in action research more. So when we come back, we'll just have a list of issues and we'll leave it at that. Uh, without making any decisions of groups. And then the second part of the lecture, I'll talk about some hints about how we conceptualize a research project. How do we start? Uh, and, and data collection and all of those kind of things. Is that okay? Yes. Dr. Bill, there are already 48 in the in the, That's correct. Yeah, so That's correct. How many so groups? I will, I will create what do you think? Six groups? Six, six rooms, groups? Six so rooms? Six okay. rooms? Okay. In a minute, you will be zapped from this common room into small breakup rooms. And I'll give you about 20 minutes to identify problems. Uh, and then you can come back here and share with us. Uh, some of the issues that you talked about. Uh, there will be no coordinators, no leaders of that in those groups. So it takes somebody's sense of responsibility, initiative, leadership to start the discussion and listen to everybody. Uh, so I would hope that as many of us can start talking um, in, in those little rooms. Is that okay? Now, let me see how to create these rooms. Uh, we said six rooms. And the division will be at random. Okay, let me change this to... All right, uh, in a minute, you will get an invitation to go to one of the breakout rooms. So there's a question here, Dr. Bill. Yes. From uh, Ma Maria Fatima. Can we group ourselves by school? I tried that. I tried that. It seems, uh, it seems uh, Zoom doesn't allow that. Okay. okay. I can only assign you, uh, I can assign you, that takes a lot of time, and I'm not sure where people are coming from, so it has to be at random. Uh, it's my apologies, that was my preference. I tried to do that, but I couldn't do that. And for some reason here, I'm not able Yeah, it's not working at all. It's not working at all. There's something very funny happening here. Ah, it is not working at all. It does not seem to assign people to room. Let me go, sorry about this, this is annoying. Let me go back to my account. And see what is happening.
Dr. Bill, there's another suggestion. Yes. Maybe they can use Google Meet for their respective groups. Okay. Okay. If people like that, that would be wonderful. Uh, so how do we do that? So we pause for a moment and then go back after the Google Meet. Is that... <laughs> Ma'am Nancy? Okay, we can... That's from that. Dr. Hernandez. Okay. Uh, do our schools are able to uh, invite each other to Google Meet? Yeah. So eight in a group, perhaps. Yes, if they have Gmail, then they can invite maybe by A. Uh, what about those teachers who to have a colleague's brother? Sorry, I cannot hear that. Yes. Sir Alan, Sir Alan Vergara, perhaps you can share to us how we're going to make the rooms. Sir Alan, the small groups. Uh, this is not going to work. I'm not sure what's happening. It worked yesterday. Yeah, you did it yesterday, sir. It was amazing. Yes. <laughs> it's not working today. Mm -hmm. uh, I am confused. I'm really confused. Okay, there is one alternative. If schools can have access to each other already on Facebook groups or other ways, they can do that. Ah, okay. Uh, let's have cover everybody. That's what I want to hear. Uh, can every school do that? So, every school can um, meet, you, yes, yes, ma'am, Charity. Are we sure that um, all teachers have another, or yeah, are all participants have colleagues from their school? Maybe there's a teacher who comes from the same, uh, from one school and nobody else from, the, from his or her school. Yes, because there's one here who said that I am a separate division a and school. Ma'am Jane V. Cabalia, okay. I am a separate division and school. So she can join. She can join maybe, other groups. Maybe by random na lang. <laughs> random. Okay. Uh, let's do it this way. Uh, I cannot create rooms that random. I did that yesterday, but it's not working today. Let's do it this way. Let's think individually. Okay about big problems in schools, education system, or the classroom. Not overall problems, but problems that interest us to do something about, something that moves us, something that we think is very important. And let us not restrict our attention to teaching and learning and objectives of the curriculum that have a wider understanding. And what I will do, I will share the whiteboard. And after five minutes of individual thinking and identifying of the big problems and projects that you may be interested in, okay, we will share it on the whiteboard together and, and, and possibly identify partners to work on that. Is that okay? That's okay, sir, Dr. Bill. I think that's the only thing I can do uh, until I sort that problem. I, it is much better dividing into small groups, but unfortunately, it's not going to work. Okay, so for the next five minutes, please think about major problems in the region, in society, in schools, in the classroom that really move you. Okay, that you're really interested in working toward. And then identify possibly one project that you would like to be interested in. And after five minutes, 
I will ask for volunteer, and the more people participate, the wider the range of options that we have with us. All right? Is that okay? That would be okay, Dr. Bill. Okay, let's get started.
Okay, let's get started. And uh, maybe people can start that already have ideas and then other people can come in as well. And I wonder if ma'am, Juliet, do you mind typing in uh, as people are talking? Ma'am, Juliet? Hello, ma'am, Juliet? Hello? Ma'am Juliet. Ma Ju <laughs> ma'am Juliet. <laughs> calling ma okay, I can type. Okay. Uh, ma'am Juliet already wrote social inequality, and obviously that's a very, very big problem in the Philippines, between schools, between regions, and even within the same school. And it's really puzzling me always. Why don't we very rarely deal with that problem in education, in research? We take it for granted. It's with us. Let's move on. Uh, so that is an interesting uh, topic. The next one, learning connectivity to distance learning, especially in these times. Now, again, we might say, well, we don't have, you know, uh, an option, uh, but maybe there are some options, and then there are some options. How do we deal with different students that have different access to the internet? Okay, other problems, other people, please. I don't want to call names. Other problems that really bother bother us or concern us. Could it be um, a classroom uh, problem, Sir Bill? Not necessarily. Any, any problem. Any problem. Okay, because I don't know whether uh, what's the societal problem. It's always about the the seem to not uh, my students get able to what they're learning to things that they learn or things that they have learned from their tech. Uh, I wonder if um, more holistic or more integrative. Is so, it Ma'am Charity? Yes, Dr. Uh, I can hardly hear you. My sincere apologies. Uh, maybe uh, okay, I'll repeat. That. I'm very sorry. Uh, other, okay, people, I'll other people, if they're hesitant to talk, uh, can type in problems with a little bit of explanation of why do you think it is a problem. Students, oh, oh what happened here? Did somebody wipe? Okay. Uh, now, who said the holistic? Again, Ma'am Juliet. Ma'am Juliet, can you hear us? Yeah, it's Ma'am Charity, sir. Oh, Ma'am Charity, you wrote uh, that? Students no, no. are not Somebody. able to learn. I, I just in typed what she said. Is that correct, Ma'am Charity? Students are not able to learn holistically. Yes, um, Ma'am. Okay. Okay. I, I, I want to learn how to teach them. Or maybe it's not just me, but maybe it's... Um, a job for all teachers in the school so that, for example, although I'm teaching physics, the students need to really what they're learning in biology or in physics. So, we don't see a view of, of the subjects that actually teach them different aspects. So, I don't think uh, I am very, very, very sorry, ma'am, Charity. I can only hear a few words. 
Okay, here we have Ma'am Sherry saying teachers working too many roles at the same time. Absolutely. Teachers workload is one of the most difficult and most pressing educational problems that I can see where people are committing suicide and resign and retire and all that kind of things from the profession. Teachers workload. Uh, Ma'am Juliet, do you mind typing these things? No, okay, sir. Mind? Okay, okay, that's that's fine. Obviously, that is very important. And I tell you what, I I did a proposal for some research. There is very very little Filipino research on that. How do teachers cope, and how do they, you know, what what do they do to cope? I think that's a very important issue. Uh, reproduction of learning modules. Yep, okay. Uh, there are a lot of uh, issues on that. Ma'am Ma Juliet, if you don't mind reading. Yeah, thanks. Uh, there is issue of quality, issue of communication, uh, issues of equity and inequality. How can we make the modules as close to uh, the the face to face and and how we can supplement them with issues that we think are important for teaching so that we don't create two different groups of students the haves and the have nots for the first round of uh, modules we had to do them very quickly to survive in a few months and that's okay but this is not the end. Okay. We can continue modify the interaction with those students and their access to resources. How do we do that and what is necessary? Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, other big problems facing society and teachers. Uh, there are no environmental problems in uh, illegal drug problems, absenteeism problems. Hello, you, good afternoon, you... Sir Bill. A good afternoon, ma'am. I am from Luina Elementary School, Illigan okay. City. Okay. Okay, I think uh, okay. one of the problem that I can see during this new normal is that all the modules are given to the children, especially to the parents, and it's the parents who are going to teach them at home for this new normal. So one of the problem that I can see since we had our parents profiling or guardians profiling and when I look at the record, most of the educational backgrounds or attainment of the guardians and parents are mostly elementary graduate and high school graduate, and most of them did not even attend school. So I think it is very challenging, or I don't know if it is a problem on, on how will the parents hand, handle the learning of their children, especially that most of them have three or four kids and given a bunch of modules uh -huh. so educational attainment would it affect the learning of the children okay. i don't know how to address that uh, okay uh, there are different ways of dealing with that we can do a correlational study yeah to find out if it, parents background effect the students. Yes. Research that can we do. Or we can say, well, irrespective of people's irrespective of the entertainment, how do you know? Please be sure your microphone is turned off if you're not talking. 
So how do we work with teacher, with parents, to provide better support for the children, irrespective of what the research says there's a relationship of that. The problem is, how can we support parents to support their students? So that is a very important, actually, how do we support teachers? So we try this, we try this, we try this, it doesn't work, we don't do something else, we try different things. Okay? So focusing on the problem of helping parents help their children is very, very important. Yes, I think that's, that's it. Okay? Yes, So sir. maybe we can write on the possible AR project working with parents or improving the relationship between parents and teachers mm -hmm. with the intention of helping students learn. So can we write that please under possible AR projects? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Beer. Okay. Now, uh, ma'am Maria, you wrote socioeconomic status of the learners also is challenging. Do you want to say a few more words about that? Hello, Serbia. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I consider the socioeconomic status of the learners is also challenging in our part as teachers because some of our pupils who belong to the low status couldn't really have somebody to mentor them, especially if the parents are working uh, as vendors, so they were the one who is behind and nobody can teach them and uh, their means of livelihood, their income is only enough for their food and they lack some materials or school supplies where they can use in their studies. So what we did as teachers, we solicit or we ask support from our stakeholders like the MQIIT where they provided us some of the learning materials for our children and that also helps them and encourage them to study. Uh, that's great, that's wonderful. I uh, tell you a little bit about the group of Thank you, sir. I'll tell you about a group of students from Law Socioeconomic School I worked with in Australia. And they realized that that's a problem. You know what they've done? The students created an after school homework center where students who, you need, who needed help can stay behind and then they had volunteer teachers to help them. Okay? So students came up with that idea. So, yes, maybe there's some people are interested in working with supporting very poor students, particularly that do not have access to home health. Uh, do you suggest that as a particular project? Ma'am Maria, do you suggest that as a particular project? Yes, sir. Uh, so what may be, okay, well, let's make it a general problem. Uh, one day I will learn to die. Support. I'll just say SES. Okay, well, you're better that type than me. All right, sir. I think that's very important. Other problems, remote 
learning changes in remote learning. Okay. Okay. Um, Ma'am Jennifer, do you like to talk a little bit more about it? What kind of challenges? What? Ma'am Jennifer, do you like to say some more about this? Perhaps her connection is unstable, sir, but she just... Okay. Uh, uh, admin, admin. I'm not sure who admin is. Uh, that's a very good problem. Bullying, would you like to say some more about it? Edmund, I may be bad connection as well. Anybody, okay, anybody might be interested in a project about bullying. Now, ma'am, Jennifer, if you can type a little bit more about what kind of challenges you have in mind that will be useful. Yes, good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. So, the uh, this is Rex Sario Balabo Elementary School. Actually, we're just using one account, uh, Jennifer Sario, because currently we just mirrored the God of Big Spin. So, we are here, the eight of us in our school. So, actually, I am the one representing the school. The challenges and the remote learning is our possible action research, pro research project because um, it could be a totally new landscape that will be emerging in the next few days. So we are expecting a lot of challenges, particularly on procedural elements and so forth. Okay, that sounds good. At this stage, you are waiting for the identify and then see which come one again. Is. It seems to me at this stage you do not have particular viewer, please. Can you hear me? Seems we cannot hear you, Dr. Bill. Uh, now my computer is playing <laughs> up. Uh, nobody is privileged. Yeah. I'll start again. Yeah, start again. It seems to me, at this stage, you do not have a particular challenge in mind, but you have a group of people working together to meet some of those challenges as they arrive. And that's good. So maybe the group can get together and brainstorm about some of the challenges and then say, which one I can start dealing with. And then- Okay, no teacher. Okay. So, I get it, I get it. So we have yeah. to. So we have to sit down together and discuss what yeah. are those challenges. Yeah. There are many challenges. We need to identify something to start with. You're not going to solve all the problems. You need to identify what are most urgent, most immediate challenges, and see what you can do with them. Documenting your learning all the time. Sometimes okay. action research start with 
a particular problem, and then we see who's interested in working on that problem. May start with the group. And the group might say, well, what are our interests? What is the most urgent to start working toward? We can start with the problem or with the group. The group can search for a common problem. So that's, that's a good uh, thing to, to uh, yeah. Now, other, other people. There's about 59 people here and we only have a handful. Health assistant for teachers during the pandemic. That's great. Uh, I don't know if anybody is interested in that as a project. Now, the other participants, the other participants can tick put a tick on some of those that they, that they identify with. So for example, if you want to express some support to the idea of bullying, from the top, from the menu on the top, uh, at the top of the uh, uh, whiteboard, choose a stamp. For example, I wanna choose a tick and put a tick next to the item that I want to um, uh, identify. So if you support any one of these as major problems that you may want to work with, put a tick next to it. I'm interested in other problems and in support to some of those. Or somebody supporting a problem that doesn't exist. Okay, Ma'am Desiree. General problem in society is poverty. That leads to classroom problem as well. The learners who will no longer be interested to go to school because parents can provide enough food for them, especially family with this. Uh, how will students be uh, more interested in learning if they have this empty stomach at all? So it is very challenging for us teachers to have plenty of learners like this in our community. That's even a bigger problem now than it was before. I don't know if schools here in the Philippines had a breakfast program. Did you? Yes, sir. Okay, you do. Uh, so some schools, some poor people who cannot have breakfast at home, were giving uh, breakfast at school. What do we do now? Uh, in our and school, sir. Yes, go on. In our school, in Luina Elementary School, we have a feeding program for those who are severely malnourished children and who those who belong to the uh, low income family so that the children can study well with their stomach is full. And with that, we can also prevent the absenteeism and dropping out of our learners. That's excellent. That's excellent. Now, there is a bigger challenge. How do we do that in online te teaching or modules? Very big problem. So maybe there's some people might be interested in doing something like that. How do we do it now when students cannot come to school? Are there ways to deal with that? I don't know the answer to that but maybe some people are interested. Uh, along with the 
support to low soci uh, socioeconomic, social inequality. Uh, that could be a project to see how can we do that. What do we need to find out? Who will be our allies? And solve all the problem of getting the resources, distributing it, and and all, and so on and so forth. Yes, that is very worthwhile problem. Uh, reading is one of the common problems of teachers, even in the face-to-face -face scenario. Now I see in the new normal kind of challenges us, because mostly. Uh, most of the parents cannot uh, produce the correct names. Uh, can you, uh, MH, can you possibly suggest a possible uh, solution to investigate to this? Where do you see are starting to think about that problem. What kind of problem may be useful to deal with this? What kind of research project may be useful? You can type it in or share it uh, on with voice. Other, other people either type or turn your microphone on and, and talk. So there's another question, sir. How do teachers know that the modules they are giving to their students are effective? Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, let me comment on that. Uh, to know if something is effective, uh, what we usually do is have two groups, a control group and a um, experimental group and compare them. Now this is not possible. We cannot have two comparable groups and compare them. And if we compare the modules with the face-to-face, uh, -face, well, I think it's obvious face-to-face -face is going to be a little bit better. But what we can do is how can the module more effective? Not whether they're effective, yes or no, but how can we make them more effective? What else we need? Uh, so that type of a project is a little bit more toward action research that aims at making life better rather than just developing whether they are effective or not. Okay, what do we know about effective pedagogy in flexible learning? Okay, uh, so we have one project here. Maybe we can write that as a project. How to improve the effectiveness of the learning modules. Should I write this, Ma'am Juliet?
Uh, Ma'am Janif says, how can we develop critical thinking about students? How do we develop critical thinking? Uh, I mentioned that in another seminar with the university faculty, that the education department has simplified the outcomes, the competencies, or whatever you call them, the standards, simplify it so that teachers can cope with them. And I think that is a good move. But the danger is other important things that we as teachers and education department are committed uh, uh, with or to may be disappearing. Like focus on critical thinking, high order thinking skills. So maybe our teaching through modules and face to face will concentrate on the basic concepts, simple procedures, and so on, at the expense of things like critical thinking, by order thinking skills that we all know are important. Now, maybe, maybe we know how to do that face to face. But this clear is how to do them online or through the module. Okay, I'm going to, with your permission, move the critical thinking to a particular project. Now, I don't know if people are interested in that or not, but I think that will be a good project. Okay. Uh, now, I'm watching the time. Uh, can we have hear from the other people who have not said anything. Do you support some of those? Are those some of the things you would like to start to work on through action research with other people or alone? Or do you have other things? Let me, I don't want to call names and embarrass people, but let us look at people who have been quiet to either put a tick on uh, some of those things uh, or uh, nominate new areas that have not been mentioned. Uh, maybe we are seeing different screens. Some of you are putting ticks non-existing. Okay, those who have been quiet, Maybe you're not interested in action research at all, and that's okay. Uh, or maybe you're too shy to say something. So they have written here in the chat box, sir. Okay. As an educator with great heart to alleviate problem in reading, if not totally eradicate it, we'll start where the problem is. Probably, we will go extra mile to teach the parents the fundamentals in reading. And that's very important. That's, that's very worthwhile. Because you will be achieving two uh, things uh, in, in, in one uh, uh, activity. You'll be educating the parents, includes, including their literacy and numeracy and other things. But also, they can help the parents. So that working with parents I think it's very important. Another thing, another thing, sir. Yeah. Uh, what if there are children with special needs, learners with special needs in the classroom? How do the teacher assess the learner properly, especially during this time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Many of the students are non readers, yeah. uh, attending the module. I mean, that is one common problem. The other problem is the blind, the uh, deaf people. I was giving a seminar 
and kept talking and talking and talking for about two hours, and then the discussion with somebody said to me, and deaf. Uh, now, he got something from the seminar in terms of what I had transferred to, but he could not hear any of the things I said. In the seminar, maybe, you know, some Spanish would be. There's something wrong. Okay. In a classroom, that is more important. Especially when you need students. How do we? Audio is gone, Dr. D. Audio is gone. Done. We lost you, Dr. D. Uh, yes, well, this is a good example. Uh, it, it seems to be today it's particularly bad. Maybe when I get excited, my computer sends that and turns the audio off. Okay. Uh, last chance for the people who have been smiling. With what we have here, I didn't see many ticks. Important other ideas. Uh, this is the last chance to one of these people. It's a problem mm -hmm. in the audio. My audio? Sir? This is the last chance for people who have been quiet yes. to nominate a problem they would like to work on, if at all, uh, or support one of the ideas or create their own new ideas. Last chance. Okay, any more problem to share with the group? I think no more, yeah. sir. They have I placed. will save this. Okay, I think it is saved. I hope it is saved. Yes, it's and also I, recorded. I, and are you, you have recorded. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, because the, this may or may not have been as effective as I would have liked, I would have liked to divide into other groups of common interest so that they can elaborate on their interest and negotiate. But unfortunately, the technology is not let us letting us do that, I will investigate if I can improve it for the next time. But I think we had some idea of issues that we can focus on in our research. So what I want to move on now is giving you hints and uh, suggestions of how to start and document your uh, research, action research. Now, I usually do not like to use the research jargon, research questions and data collection and instruments and analysis. I like to use common words like what is it you're trying to deal with? What do you want to do? Uh, how do you know it's going to be effective? What do you need evidence? Uh, you know, observing, collecting evidence, and so on, rather than the formal language. But, but the proposals demand that we say things in formal language, instruments like 
S and uh, this and this and that. And be sure that you include a little bit of uh, quantitative data to support the authorities. So we need to learn some of that language uh, as well. Now, let me give you my bias here. Why I think a completely quantitative research is not very helpful. This is my bias, okay? And I will explain it and justify it. And if you want to disagree with it, it's okay as well. First of all, quantitative research in general tend to follow a formula. You have this section, that section, you do this, you do that, and then you do it and bingo. So it, it kills the creativity, the flexibility that people have. And more often, more often than not, it looks at the outcome of the project at the end, whether it was successful or not. It does not tell us how to do it. It does not tell us uh, what failed, what were our successes, how did we feel about it, what are the problems we have to solve along the way. So just following quantitative methods that depend only on test and you know, maybe survey and so on, it will miss a lot of very important learning. Uh, things that we tried and we should not have done, so we teach other people to avoid doing them. Uh, so we don't have that option in completely quantitative method. So it does not document the learning about most of the research. Working together, problems that that arose, convincing the school principal, as I said before, all of these things are not mentioned. And then the context is not taken into consideration. So if we did something in Bikudnon, and if we did something in Iligan, if we did something in Manila or Bicol or whatever, it might sound the same. Okay? So we don't take the local consideration, local needs and local problems into, into account. And I think it fails to generate significant knowledge from the failure of the research, the limitations, which I think the limitations are sometimes more educative than the whether something works or not. Now, how do we go about action research projects? I want to describe this process in terms of everyday life things that teachers do, how teachers operate. I said earlier, everybody learns from their experience. So in one sense, we all do action research. It's not a foreign way of learning, but we need to formalize it a little bit. We need to be systematic about it rather than just haphazard learning from doing. So, what I suggest is identify a problem similar to what we have done, uh, and hopefully in small groups it will work better. So, if you have a group working together, try to identify an important problem. Not something whether this method is better than that method. This is uh, a bit too simple, okay, and it doesn't take the holistic of the learning find a real problem and you identified many real big problems. If you have a group, negotiate interest. I interpret this problem this and I'm interested in this part of the problem. So negotiate, listen to people. And maybe the big problem can give rise to special subgroups. Okay, so teachers in school may be interested in problem of literacy, some people can do this, some people can do that, some people can do that. Negotiate. And then form groups with common interests. I tried to do that 
here and we fail, but you can do that in your skills as well. And then brainstorms, brainstorms. Why, what are the different factors associated with that? And remember that teaching methods is not the answer to every problem we have in education. Some of the factors may not relate to teacher or teaching practice, but may involve other things as well. So think widely and think laterally about those and then say, okay, where do we start with that? To make that decision, maybe we need more information. Maybe we need questionnaires. Uh, maybe we need to talk to parents. Maybe we need to talk to other colleagues. Maybe we need to read about it, see what the literature suggests. So maybe we need preliminary research to identify the problem and possible solutions. So this is before we start the action research project, uh, problem. Now, we read a little bit, we have information, we have our interests, we can sit down and say, okay, let's see where do we start. Very complex problem, I need to start with something. Okay, how am I gonna do it? Am I gonna change teaching, something in school? Uh, you know, uh, who, who do I need to work with? Uh, what are the priorities of the school and community and so on, and come up with a plan. Now, usually in writing application, this has to be organized a little bit before you submit the actual proposal. So you need to probably do all of that research before you submit the proposal. How long will it take? Who, who else is involved? How, how am I going to do it? week by week, day by day, whatever. So make up a plan. And not only a plan for the action, a plan for collecting evidence as well. What evidence do I need to, to do? Now, I will talk about the evidence as part of the next cycle of action research, which is act and observe. Carry out the plan, do it, do it. You keep an eye, keep a record. Write your observations about what you have seen. Don't wait to the result of the test at the end of the questionnaire. The day-to-day -day is as educative as the end results. Collect some evidence during and after. I don't know what that evidence is, you decide. Uh, is it going to be instruments? Is it going to be observations? Is it going to be, you know, audio recording? What what kind of evidence do I need? And that has to be very related to what you're trying to achieve and solve. And then have meetings to reflect. Now, this is probably one of the most underutilized instrument in action research, meetings, in discussions. I had, a, in many re action research projects, we had meetings to make decisions and reflect about what we're doing. And I would be very careful in writing the minutes of the, teach, of the meeting. Not only the final decision, but what issues we discussed what problems we are in fight, what observations. And if there's different opinions, that's great. I write them down because all of that is learning from the action research. So we can use questionnaires, tests, and surveys if you want. I usually say, why do you need a questionnaire when you can talk to the students? You know, they're only one classroom, mainly. Sometimes we have more. But whether we want to use questionnaires, interviews, observations, whatever it is, it is good to do that and take notes of the actions being done, your observation about what happened during the action, and recording meetings. Ask the students, ask teachers, ask, ask parents. Notice I'm not saying 
questionnaires and interviews when I take transfer. Whichever way you can see, you get the most important information. Uh, check the results of the learning. That's okay. Changes in learning if you can. That's part of the data, but that's not the only data. Give tests and questionnaires if necessary. It's okay. But uh, this is not the only way we collect evidence. Reflect. Now, one of the most important thing in action research is not statistical testing of results, analysis of questionnaires, and so on. Thinking, thinking, and thinking. Be critical, be reflective. Now, how can we do critical reflection on things? Discuss it with a friend. See, you know, teach, could be fellow teachers. What do you think is happening? That's what I observed. Do you agree with it? Disagree with it? That's fine. Go over your plan and discuss what happened. Explain what happened to somebody maybe outside the group. What worked? Why it worked? What did not work and why? The type of questions I asked ma'am earlier. Ask each other those questions or reflect on them individually. Where do we go from here? Make other plans. What more evidence I need about the problems and, and so on. What have I learned about students and about teaching, about the community, about the education system? Not only how to improve reading. There are a lot of learning that is developing, not about the problem itself, but about the context, about the students, about society, about everything. Don't dismiss those. Don't dismiss those. If something comes up and you say, wow, look, you know, uh, uh, I haven't found, I, I didn't realize this about the students, uh, the way they respond to different things, even though that was not the aim of the research, if it is important, focus on it. And share your learning with other groups or other individuals. More on critical reflection. Recording the meeting, decisions, I talked about that. Agreements, disagreements are very important. Minority views are very, very important. Don't try to achieve consensus. Conflict is part of how we operate. And if we don't talk about it, it means it's not, you know, it's too embarrassing to talk about it and it's not very useful attitude. Reflections on the outcome and action as well as the process and how the group worked together. There are a lot of learnings that happen in action research other than how do we teach algebra and reading and, and all of those kind of things. A little bit more on critical reflection. Uh, on what we have done, documented on the feeling, on factors that assisted, factors that hindered, whose voice is silent, and the unsolved problems. Okay. Uh, the last one, uh, sit back and ask yourself these questions. Is my project critical enough? Did I ask the important questions? Did I use the collect, you know, did I collect the important data? What are the limitations of what I have done? Have I challenged the status quo or am I just following uh, uh, directions? Think rapidly about the whole project. What emancipatory things happen in that project? What have teachers I'm working with or teachers I'm working with, how are they different now than before? Uh, is my project cyclical in action and reflection? How did that help? Okay, 
I finished my presentation. Uh, now, if you were, uh, let me keep this for a second. If you were expecting a, um, a, a session on these are the research questions, uh, sorry, this is how you formulate research questions, and this is how you collect data, this is how you conduct the interviews, I have not done that. What I'm interested in at this stage, maybe in other sessions we can deal with those problems, are the general ways in which we can understand action research, how is it different from different research methods, and how to conceptualize it, and things in terms of the process of action research. Now, if you want to do interviews, if you want to develop a test, if you want to develop uh, you know, any other method of data con con uh, collection, maybe you need a little bit of training on that to develop good research questions, to develop good instruments and good data analysis. But uh, these are technical skills, not uh, practical skills and emancipatory skills. What I try to achieve in this session, and you tell me if I'm successful in, in or not, is to look at principle and big issues in design and discuss a little bit the different types of action research so that we can start planning. There will be a need for further input in terms of how to develop proposals, how to develop questionnaires, and so on and so forth. I assume that many of you teachers are working with people at university. And I hope people at university can contribute to those skills. But remember, these are technical skills. They are not the most important. And these skills can be developed by doing and a little bit support from the other. Now, before I sign off, I just want to mention some resources. Two books. Uh, I would recommend the first one very highly. I'm not familiar with the second one very much. The second one tends to be a little bit more practical. Do this, do this, and do that. And that may be useful. They're both available free on the internet. Uh, the people at the university should have copies of them, both of them. You can request that from anybody from the university. Uh, I really highly recommend the Clemens uh, book because it talks about the principle, a little bit about procedures of action research, and about the main focus of action research. Many of the topics I discussed today come from not that book, but from Stephen Kim. The other book is useful for some of the technical uh, aspects of it. Now, in addition of that, I have here many websites that talks about action research uh, that you can download. Now, if you want a hard copy of this, this presentation, you can always also request it from the university and somebody will uh, Give you a copy because I will leave a copy uh, with them. Now, I finished my contribution, but there are a lot of things that we can talk about. Uh, Dr. Bill? Yes. There is something here in the chat box uh, regarding classroom. So, from um, Manzanero. Possible classroom problem today is the assurance that our students really answer the modules by themselves with the help of parents, or is it only the parents who answer it to make it faster? Yeah, it's I don't know, I don't know how you find that out. Um, and uh, yeah, that comes in with working with parents because the role of the teacher. Uh, is not only explaining the content. We manage the class and we assure students are on task and all of that kind of thing that is not going to be possible. 
So somebody suggesting has suggested that in the moment uh, that uh, maybe parents, maybe teachers need to deal with parents more than dealing with students, at least at some levels, with some particular groups of people. Uh, so it is, you know, I don't think anybody thought about this in terms of policy. So yes, we have modules, but are they going to do all the teaching? I don't know. I, I cannot imagine. So how we're going to use the module? How we're going to establish those connections and and bridge the gap with the. Um, but we have also. Again. Yeah, we have also a recommendation here from Mom Maria Fatima. She said, I am from Luina Elementary School, sir. As a teacher, I will make the communication open between my parents, either through cell phone or Facebook, and be friendly with them in dealing okay. with their problem. That's interesting and important. But let me tell you about one finding from research that deals with teachers, with parents. And this is an international problem. There's been a lot of research. How do we work with parents? None of it is current. None of it is in terms of endemic, pandemic. But we've learned something very important. When teachers say, look, come and talk to us. When schools have a meeting where parents can come in, they have special workshops. They may even have decision-making for parents. What they have found is some parents participate more than others. And in general, it is kind of parents that are not the real problem. These parents, most probably, their students are doing okay. So when we open the doors of the school to parents to come and discuss their children, not all parents do that. Very specific group of parents, mainly they're professionals, they have good employment, they may have gone to university themselves, and so on. Now, does that mean the indigenous students, the poor students, the sellers on the street and the markets, does that mean they don't care about the school, about their school children? I don't think so. I think we will be very wrong to assume that. They don't come to school. Maybe they're shy. Maybe they think, oh, teachers are out there. I was very bad in school. I'm not going to go and talk to teachers. Okay? Uh, Oh, the whole school culture is very foreign to them. The language we use in school is different. What they found, what they found is a lot of times the school has to go to the community. Okay? Community meetings in the community, maybe house visitation, and so on. Now, I'm not saying that that will be possible especially in the in, uh, pandemic. But think about this problem. Just saying, we are open, we want parents to talk to us, or have classes on the internet, not going to solve the problem. So we need to be more creative, more critical about dealing with that problem. It's utterly important. And any learning we learn from that will be very, very useful. But it's not simple. It's challenging. Sir Alan okay. Vergara, sir, also has a question. Sir Alan? Sir Alan Vergara? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, would you like to ask the question? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dr. Bill. Good afternoon. Uh, I have some clarification about what you have presented this morning. Uh, that action research is not just the usual research done by the teachers but a special type of research. First question is that, can you give us an explicit understanding of how action research becomes a special type of research? And second, is this type of research considered as the heart and soul 
of all quant qualitative research methods being used? Uh, the second question is a little bit easier uh, to answer. I wouldn't say that there are different methodologies in qualitative research. Not all of them are action research. There are a lot of other ethnographic type research, phenomenological case study, blah, 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 uh, from different perspectives. I would like it to see being at the heart of, but there's different uh, methodologies. There are some people committed action researchers and some people say, well, I'm informed by action research, but I do other things as well. The first one is a little bit more difficult because it's, there is no checklist, say tick, 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 is action research. Action research is a set of principles, okay, that people can use in designing and in reflecting on their projects. As I said before, there are no two action research I have seen that are exactly the same. And there are a lot of arguments between action researchers. Is this action research or this not action research? The question is, what kind of action research you think you want to do and how you can do it better? That is the important thing, not the labels. If you want to call your action research, action research, or phenomenology, or case study, it doesn't matter very much. What really matters is the amount, or sorry, the depth of the learning you generate. Now, the difference between action research and other thing is this commitment to ask questions about practice and develop the knowledge from the practice and improve the practice based on the knowledge. So this cyclic thing between action, reflection, uh, knowledge, practice, is what makes action research, action research. But there are many other uh, uh, criteria and commitments and uh, principles, but different people adhere to them in different ways. Okay, thank you. No, I did not answer your question, Sir Alan, but at least can you see the difficulty in answering that question? Yes, sir. There are no um, specific criteria. There are certain principles, and you as a researcher may like those principles. Another researcher might like those principles. I don't know if there's anybody in the... Okay, what, what is dangerous and has happened, I think election research has turned out into a recipe that you follow rather than set of principles that teachers make decisions. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ben. Okay, thanks for the question. Other questions, comments about what we've done or have not done? I think we dealt with most of the comments in the question. Where do we go from here? Uh, I was hoping to generate some groups around certain uh, specific areas and projects. That doesn't work, but that's okay because that is a challenge for us to do. Many of you are working with university people. Have a chat with them, brainstorming, identifying problems. What do, you, what do various people like to do? And if there's a room to do five, six research projects in school, that's fine. If people want to collaborate with each other, that's fine. And then look at what information we need from the students, from the literature, design a plan and do it and off you go. You're on your way. Uh, if there's a need for further training, specific in certain skills, uh, I'm happy to uh, uh, you know, arrange another session 
but you have a lot of good expertise at the university as well. So, uh, any other reactions? I would like to read here, sir, from the chat box. Uh, according to Ma'am Desiree Budlong, educational cap capabilities of parents to teach to their children, so similar to the one that we already read. This is one of the challenging problems that we are facing now. Although we have provided assistance to the parents, but instructions are always repeated. And we are afraid that all the modules we have released will no longer be yeah. essential, not effective. Yeah. yeah. Look, I can only answer this question from my experience, my point of view. Right? I am not very excited about experimental research in education. Maybe we need some certain type of experimental research and so on, but to do it well, the conditions of doing it well usually are not within the capability of a school teacher. Uh, I think at best, the knowledge is limited. I think there is much more depth in qualitative research. This is my bias. Uh, I'm not alone that uh, uh, think that, and I'm not basing it on just personal preference. I'm basing it on years of experience in research or not. Now, you heard from the uh, Sir uh, Nick that the education department demands some numbers. You've got to throw in some numbers. But at the same time, at the same time, learn from the experience of what you have done. Okay? When you're presenting a paper at a conference and so on, you don't have to report about those numbers that you collected only to satisfy the education department. That's, that's what I would do if I was doing action research here in, in, in schools in, in the Philippines. Satisfy the people if that's what they want, even though I may not, may or not, but concentrate on other useful things that I think are important. So the answer is, yeah, if you ask me personally, I think uh, we shouldn't use numbers at all, not because numbers are bad in general, but because the learning is very shallow uh, and, and, uh, and so on. But... It's not up to me, so we need to do a little bit of the other as well. And I, I gave reasons. I gave four reasons why I don't think quantitative research is very useful. I'm quite happy to defend them to education authorities if they want. Okay, so thank you for that, sir. Another question, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Bill. So from this is from Ubaldo Laya. Uh, Dennis, I think. Sir Dennis. So most schools in elementary are adopting modular learning distance, but there is other form, digital modular learning distance, Lear distance learning, uh, which he knew that there's an elementary school using this platform. So he would like to ask if this digital modular is better than the modular learning distance? Is digital better than the modular? I gave a talk to the university about flexible education. And I argued that to say this one is better than the other one is not very useful research question. Okay. Because the, the decision to go for modules or online teaching was not based because one is better. It was based on availability. So to know that this is better than that is useless. Now, we have enough literature from around the world to tell us that. But it's not going to help us. 
Because even if we say digital is better, but it's not available, so what? It's not available. I would not ask question which is better. I will ask question, how can I improve either one of them? That's the challenge. That's how good. to do it better. That's right. That is more useful. Yeah. I'm very, very concerned to tell you the truth about this division between online and modules. And I mentioned that before, I mentioned it in other contexts. I'm very concerned about that because what kind of learning will happen in modules? Now, I have not looked at modules, I'm not generalizing, but I can imagine it's going to be limited to concepts and simple procedures, simple applications. What is missing, even though it is, it may be successful, it may be successful, there's missing the high order thinking skill and the contextualization and all of those uh, problems. Uh, so how to use them, increase your in interactions, working with parents and so on, are much more useful questions than which method is better. Okay, sir. Uh, is Sir Dennis Pascubilio here, sir? Please ask the second question that you have here. You may turn on your camera and unmute your microphone, Sir Pascubilio. Uh, yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. From Obaldo Laya, ma'am. Ah, yes. Good afternoon. Dr. Hill. Hello, sir. Good, uh, Bill. Good afternoon. Uh, I just want to clar clarify, ma'am, about the digital learning distance and the modular. Because there are two types of modular, ma'am. Digital and the hard copy, which is now we are using modular learning distance, meaning hard copy to be distributed to the learners, while the modular, uh, digital modular, is only a uh, soft copy of modules. I want to uh, ask which one is effective when I am, uh, if I will make an uh, action research because in mood, uh, digital it can lessen the cost of of course paper ink compared to digital okay uh, uh, who are you who are you addressing the question to to you sir in, uh, oh, to me. To... okay okay all right i'll stress the point i just made now now when we decide when we decided to go on online, digital, or print, how did we make that decision? I'm asking, how did we make that decision? Anyway, sir, we, we are basing the availability of the right. Right. terrains. Oh. Right. Right. There are, there so, are, are you sorry, sir? go ahead, sir. So we did not make the decision because one of them is better than the other. We made the decision based on availability. So if we do research and say, this is better than this, better than that, not gonna change anything because it's not gonna increase the availability. I would make a research that says, look, I think connectivity to the internet is very important. Poor people don't have it. Let me see if I can solve that problem. Let me see if I can increase the availability to the internet. Let me see if I can increase the gadgets. How do I do that? I don't know. I beg and borrow and lobby and fight and do whatever. To me, that is more useful than doing a research saying, this is better than this, better than that. We sort of know 
you know, online teaching is it better? Whether it increases the scores at the end, I don't care. We all know there are more possibilities for interactions and all that kind of thing. Uh, and we know that digital is probably better than print, although it may be a lot of times just a copy of the print, but in principle, we can add more things. So the questions I would think are important for action research are, how can I do each one of these better? Irrespective of what is the best. Or how can I increase the access of all students to one or the other and so on? Now we cannot solve all problems of access. But if we can help 10 students by lobbying, by finding resources, by money, by sharing facilities, I don't know what is possible. But to me, I would encourage people to put their energy into increasing the access or how to make each one of those better rather than wasting time saying this is better than the other and so on. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you, sir, for that. Uh... Okay. So there's another question, sir. Uh, which is effective methodology in conducting action research? Survey method or quasi-experimental? Can you answer that? I've already discussed that. Yeah. I've already answered. Mm -hmm. I addressed that question. Mm -mm. Thank you, sir. So, do you still have other clarifications? Uh, Genev, is it Genev? Uh, Genev uh, Kabalia. Yes, sir. Uh, I won't be too much fast. Can I send you a sample of research to your email? Most convenient to you. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm very happy to do that. I'm very happy to do that. And I will type my email here. Other questions? Uh, this I, don't know, I don't know why everything is appearing in capital letters, but that's okay. Which ones are capital letters? Uh, what I'm typing. Ah, yes. Caps lock. Mm -hmm. Uppercase. It, it just, it, it, it doesn't matter actually capital letters and emails. So this is my, uh, ah, yeah. my email address. Somebody wanted my email address. Yes, please, uh, Ma'am Geneva, I'm happy to uh, appreciate. Thank you for sharing your email answer. So any more clarification or recommendations that you want to make? What about the grouping, sir, the, uh, that we're going to have a collaborative action research? Well, unfortunately, I am not sure what went wrong here. For some reason, I cannot group. Yes. So we will not be able to do that, but what I suggested, people do the groupings in their context, in their schools. Okay. Go through a similar process, ask people what they're interested in, and then try to find some commonalities. I, uh, I was heartened to listen to Sir Nate that the department now allow teachers to work together. Yes. I think I said that before, some of the, well, some of the literature on teacher change and school change show that teachers working in collaboration is much, much more effective. But if you want to work alone on a project, that's fine as well. Any more questions?
So shall we group ourselves now, sir? Uh, how are we going to do that? Yeah. So some of them, uh, there's a suggestion that we will do it Facebook Messenger and some in Gmail group. Or some... Yeah. If other people want to do that, uh, I cannot coordinate it centrally from here. Mm. Uh, and there's probably no need to come okay. back. But I think it's a good idea for groups, uh, even one group can stay here. Uh, and use this. But if there are other groups to continue the meeting on Facebook, on whatever, 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 uh, then I think that may be a very good idea. So how are you suggesting we do that now? Ah, okay, so we will just do it by ourselves and then yeah. we're, yeah, consult you individually, sir. Are yeah. you still open for consultation? Uh, yeah, what do you mean today? Uh, some other time after yeah, I'm happy to collaborative efforts. I'm happy to. Yeah, thank you uh, so much. It, it's very unfortunate that it did not work as planned because I was thinking after generating this group, we divide again into groups. Uh, but it, it groups around topics. Uh, but unfortunately, it did not. I'll be checking on that. So if oh, people want funny. to divide into various modes, Facebook, whatever, whatever, uh, communicate with each other and say how we, uh, how do we meet? Yes. So we will just do it by ourselves, sir, and then we're going to consult you by group. I, 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 okay. So unfortunately. Yeah. So. At this point in time, sir, we would like to uh, give you the certificate of appreciation. All right, thank you. Okay, so uh, please allow me to read the citation of the certificate of appreciation. Mindanao State University, Iligan Institute of Technology, College of Education, presents the certificate of appreciation to our speaker and resource person, the keynote resource person. So we will request the presence of our chairperson, Department of Professional Education, Dr. Nancy Hernandez, on CAM, and Dr. Amelia Buan, our College of Education Dean, to present this certificate of appreciation to Dr. Bill Atwe for sharing his knowledge and expertise as resource speaker during the webinar workshop entitled Towards Quality and Relevance of Action Research via Zoom on October 1, 2020. Given this first day of October 2020, signed Dr. Amelia T. Buan, the Dean of the College of Education and the Chancellor of MSIIT, Dr. Sukarno D. Tangol. So let's give a big round of applause to our speaker. Thank you, sir, for 10 days active engagement regarding research. And we really learned a lot from you, sir, and from the rest of the discussions together with all the participants uh, that will lead us to become even more productive researchers in the days to come. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yes. Great privilege. So at this point in time, sir, we would like to hear from an impression represented by one of the teachers here in the Department of Education in Luinab Elementary School, where we are having our extension program on reading across subject areas for a better reading avenue for the learners and also serves as a training ground for teachers to become even more effective in their subject areas or their fields of specialization. So let us all welcome this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, Ma'am Maria Fatima of Loinab Elementary School. Ma Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Good day to everyone. It is a very nice opportunity to be part of this webinar about research. 
where we will gain professional development even in this time of pandemic. Uh, how to conduct and undergo research is quite a problem for us since it's been a long time that we learned it from our undergrad. It might be a decade now, so since I graduated 1994 <laughs> from now, so I am very thankful. And we are very thankful that we have refreshed our minds. So refreshing our minds helps a lot in enhancing our knowledge and insights that we can enable to we can enable ourselves to conduct action research and solve problems that occurs in our respective classroom. And with that also, we are encouraged to participate in the sessions by analyzing our problems in schools, in our classroom, and as we listen to Sir Bill, we were we were enlightened and we can now we are now ready to do an action research and be a member of a research team in the future. Thank you, Sir Bill, and to the MSUIIT for giving us this opportunity. God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, you Mom Fatima. So we will be seeing you face to face if the pandemic is over. Yes, sir. We used to go to the school in Luenib Elementary School having this yes. essential program. So with that, we will move on to the closing remarks supposed to be given by our assistant dean, Professor Oswardo Pabatang Jr. But since he's attending to another important meeting thing, so. We will be having. He's here, Ma'am June. Ah, oh, he's here. Yes, Sir. So, oh, Sir Pabatang is here. Sir Pabatang is here. Is here. <laughs> Sir Loy, good afternoon. Hello, Pab. Good afternoon. Because he has lots of things to do, <laughs> yes, Sir, in the institute and the office as well. So let us welcome, ladies and gentlemen, the Assistant Dean of the College of Education, Professor Oswardo A. Pabatang Jr., to give us the closing remarks, Sir. To our distinguished speaker, uh, Dr. Bill Atway, our college dean, Dr. Amelia Buan, the organizing committee headed by Dr. Hernandez, our EPE chairperson, our partners from DPN, the participants of today's webinar, a blessed afternoon to all of you. Even though I was not able to attend this webinar, but I believe that all of you have well done through this webinar. It is my great pleasure that you had fruitful discussions, though I think one day is not enough. It is my great pleasure also, and expecting everyone that every participant to start conceptualizing their own research with their individual or in groups. I am sure that this webinar you have excellent presentations and active discussions. So I conclude that the purpose of this webinar has been completely accomplished. In addition, your positive banners reveal that you have made careful preparations and great efforts for your participations. On behalf of the IIT administration, we are very much grateful for you, sir, Dr. Bill, for sharing your time and expertise in research, even in this time of pandemic. My salute to the faculty of the Department of Professional Education, the host of this successful event, for your hard work and dedication that lead to the success of this one-day webinar. I would like to pay my deep respect to all the participants for your positive participations, and I hope that you have learned many things in today's session. With this, we hope to see you again next time, and I hope that this, uh, this is a beginning of a fruitful partnership 
among different teachers and said faculty. Thank you so much, and once again, good afternoon. Thank you very much. Okay, so that concludes the 10-day active engagement of our speaker, Dr. Bill Atwe. And we really thank you, sir. So we will be looking forward to more engagements with you in the future, especially that you are so generous in accepting us during consultations and giving us brilliant ideas on how to go about our researches. Indeed, that is very useful. Uh, what really struck me personally the most is when you said it's not a matter of this one is better than this one, but it's a matter of giving more improvement on what there is the need to improve more. All for the good of the world. You said uh, we do some researches for personal reasons, but most of all, we do it for the world. Thank you so much, sir. So everyone, please would like to see you on CAM and we'll have another picture taking. Our class picture this afternoon. Our Department of Education teachers uh, from the Integrated Developmental School. Ma'am Noel, good afternoon. Let's say hi to Dr. Bill. Ma'am Juan, our Dean. Uh, Hello. Hi, Dr. Bill. Hello, Dr. Bill. Hi, Dr. Bill. Hi, Dr. Bill. Hi, Dr. Bill. So have you signed in already your attendance? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we will be expecting the e-certificates to arrive at our end soon. Okay. Picture taking pain one, ma'am, Nancy? Yes, I'm done with the first group, next group. Next group. <laughs> How many pains are there? Two or three? Three. Uh, three. Three groups. Yeah. Okay, so next three, third group. Here we are. Your faces. Wonderful group. Yeah. The chat box is filled with suggestions, questions, recommendations. Okay, I'm done. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Have a grand afternoon ahead of us. Keep safe and God bless us all. Mabuhay tayong lahat. Thank you, Dr. Bill. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much, Dr. Bill. Thank you. We do have we do have one more session tomorrow. Yes, for the public. Yeah. Good afternoon.